New Delhi is the host of this year's Russia-India-China Foreign Ministers Meeting. The 15th edition of the RIC Foreign Ministers Meeting will see Sergei Lavrov from Russia, Sushma Swaraj from India and Wang Yi from China holding a trilateral discussions on a range of regional and global issues. Lavrov and Wang will also hold bilateral talks with Ms. Swaraj. The India-China bilateral will take place in the shadow of the standoff on the Doklam Plateau. North Korea, terrorism and migration can be expected to figure in the discussions among other regional and global issues. The talks take place a few weeks after India revived the so-called Quad with the United States, Japan and Australia. Diplomats from the four countries met on the margins of the East Asia Summit at Manila in the Philippines, drawing a predictable response from China. A Chinese spokesperson hoped that the Quad will not be directed at a third party. Coinciding with the meeting of the RIC, Troika will be India's 2 plus 2 dialogue with Australia and the India-Japan-Australia trilateral talks, both at the level of officials. The special representatives of India and China tasked with negotiating an agreement on a mutually acceptable border are likely to meet in New Delhi soon. Joining me this evening is Ramesh Ramachandran. We, uh, Ramachandran, Vion's uh, senior international correspondent, uh, with us from Vion's international desk. Ramesh, hi, uh, good to see you. So, in terms of uh, this trilateral that's taking place between Russia, India, and China, given what's happening in the world right now, given uh, you know uh, different lines being drawn in the sand, how important is this sort of meeting between three of uh, what many would say uh, the most powerful countries in the world? To answer that question, Aisha, one needs to understand how RIC foreign ministers meeting came about in the first place. Now, this was mooted by a former Russian prime minister, Evgeny Primakov, in the mid-90s. And the first meeting of the RIC Troika met in 2002. And since then, we've seen a steady meeting annually at, uh, at uh, alternative in each other's countries uh, for the last 15 odd years. And this is the 15th meeting of the RIC, which is going to take place in New Delhi tomorrow. But that said, uh, on the agenda would be a host of uh, regional international issues and crises, including North Korea, Syria, Iran, and a host of other uh, regional issues as well. But importantly, from India's perspective, Aisha, this meeting takes place, as you mentioned, in the immediate aftermath of the resolution of the standoff on the Doklam Plateau. And from that perspective, the India-China bilateral meeting on the margins of the trilateral would be something to watch out for. Absolutely. And uh, Ramesh, also in terms of uh, global changes afoot, uh, the Jerusalem decision has uh, sent the world into a tizzy in many ways. I'm, I'm pretty certain it might not come up in the specifics as far as this trilateral goes. But do you think that the shadow of that decision is going to hang heavy over talks no matter where they take place and between whom? Aisha, the, the West Asia peace process or the Israel-Palestine issue has been consistently figuring in the joint statements released by the RIC Troika at uh, every successive meeting over the last several years. Now, the problem from India's perspective would be that uh, if the same language of formulation is also replicated this year, then it might pose problems for India. Why? Because uh, the RIC Troika has in the past, including last year, adopted the language of formulation which says uh, we are for a viable, independent, sovereign state of Palestine with East Jerusalem at its capital. Now that, to my mind, would be a thorny issue for India given its uh, reticence on the issue of uh, Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. We leave it at that. Uh, Ramesh, thanks very much for joining us this evening with your perspective.